Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today we honor Saint Rita of Kasia, a patron saint of difficult marriages, impossible causes, infertility, and parenthood. Saint Rita, or Margarita Lotti, was born in 1381 in the city of Rocca Perenna, which was a small suburb of Kasia in central Italy. Her parents were noble and charitable persons. And given that Rita was born to them in their old age, uh, Rita was looked upon as a great blessing from God. In her youth, Rita loved to visit the Augustinian nuns near her home. And eventually, when she was about 12, she expressed her desire to, to join them in the convent. But her parents, resisted and uh, pressured her into uh, the, um, uh, an arranged marriage, which was a custom at the time, you know, to uh, marry a nobleman by the name of Paolo Mancini. He was a good man in general, but rather um, uh, quick-tempered and a bit immoral as well, and he had many enemies in that region of Kasia. His family, you know, uh, was in a feud, as it were, kind of continued throughout the generations towards another family. He would be an abusive husband, unfortunately, to Rita uh, for many years. And Rita, you know, persevered. She had uh, you know, withstood his insults, uh, physical abuse, and infidelities for many years. And all the while, you know, she uh, raised their two sons very uh, diligently and faithfully in the Catholic faith. Thankfully, Rita was able to uh, have a good influence on her husband to kind of convert him to better ways, to become a better man, even to the point where he would renounce La Vendetta, you know, which is uh, the revenge that he and his family had towards his other family in Kasia. So Paolo was uh, desirous of peace and reconciliation personally, you know, but um, eventually uh, he was murdered by his enemies. Rita publicly forgave uh, his murderers at her husband's funeral. But her two sons, when they were old enough and motivated by an uncle, who uh, wanted to continue the, the vendetta, the revenge, to keep that going. You know, the two sons continued this uh, spirit of uh, revenge and the family feud, as it were, to keep that going. And Reed, of course, was fearful that this would um, also lead to them, you know, becoming uh, either murderers or becoming murdered themselves. So, uh, but in any case, they risked risked losing their souls if they chose the path of revenge and murder. And so Rita tried to persuade them from that uh, retaliation, but without success. She therefore prayed that God take her sons rather than uh, see them ever commit a mortal sin, you know, that of murder. So Rita's prayers were answered. One year later, both sons died of dysentery. So indeed, it's better to um, die, be taken from this world, rather than commit a single mortal sin. After the deaths of her husband and her two sons, Rita set her heart once again on joining the Augustinian convent in Kasia, and she asked to enter uh, as a widow, but she was rejected. She asked three times and was rejected three times. But that didn't stop her. She persevered and asked again. And on this occasion, she was accepted, but on the condition that she reconcile her family or her husband, her deceased husband's family well, with that of her, husband, uh, her husband's murderer's uh, family. And so uh, this had uh, some influence also in the convent life, you know, just kind of peace in the, among these families was so uh, big a thing in Kasia, it, it kind of uh, would have its effects in the convent life too. So with the help of God and asking her patron saints, 
you know, for their heavenly help, the conflict was quickly and miraculously resolved. And at the age of 36, Rita was therefore able to finally enter into the monastery, where she spent the next 40 years of her life until her death, living in austerity, penance, prayer, and charity, especially towards the sick and elderly nuns and to the visitors who visited her at the convent for her, her a wise spiritual counsel. At about the age of 60, Rita received a special grace from our Lord. She was always devoted to Christ crucified, you know, as any good Catholic should be, and drew much strength from her meditation on the passion of Christ. And Jesus gave her uh, the mystical gift of uh, quasi uh, stigmata, you could say, but one of his thorns from his um, crown of thorns, you know, um, lodged into Rita's forehead. So if you see images of Rita, she has a, a gash in her forehead, perhaps the thorn still there, and a little bit of blood coming out. You know, that's the, um, the gift that our Lord gave to her. You know, an external sign of her internal conformity to Christ crucified, her, the suffering Christ. And that sign she would bear externally until her death on May 22nd, 1457. And she died at the age of 76. So St. Rita, she's uh, a source of inspiration for all of us you know, all of us from different vocations of life, you know, obviously marriage, those who have difficult spouses, uh, you know, um, not ideal marriages, uh, which are many, you know, can turn to her for help so as to, um, in imitation of her, to be faithful to one's marriage vows, you know, to the very end, even when one's spouse isn't as faithful and then too in other vocations of life as a widow, and then as a religious sister, St. Rita is also a source of inspiration as well, especially in um, her uh, endurance of the trials, you know, um, in each of these vocations, you know, and uh, like her, we find our strength in the cross, you know, praying before Jesus crucify, the crucifix, you know, being devoted to the passion of Christ will be for us like it was for her a source of consolation, of help, of holiness, of happiness. Praise be Jesus and Mary.